Anyway, more of that later. Kevin McStay and Tony Davis are with us tonight to reflect on the many talking points from the three games already played and to look ahead to that big game tomorrow. But we're going to start with today's action and the All-Ireland champions Tyrone taking on a resurgent Kildare. Commentary comes from Jer Canning and Martin Carney. The All-Ireland champions are forced into changing their goalkeeper for this quarter-final. Pascal McConnell returns between the posts in place of John Devine, who's dislocated his shoulder. Also missing, as you've heard, Enda McGinley, so Kevin Hughes and last year's Player of the Year, Sean Cavanagh continue in midfield, with Stephen O'Neill leading the attack on a day that number 6 Conor Gormley plays his 50th championship match. And Kildare are also forced into making changes. Mikey Conway has a serious knee injury and coming in at left half back for just his third championship start is Gary White, last year's under-21 captain. One change made up front sees Eamon Callaghan given the nod to start at full forward as part of a line which includes two excellent scoring forwards, Alan Smith and team captain Johnny Doyle. Ready to start this quarter-final tie. And straight away Dermot Early taps it down there as far as Daryl Flynn gives it everything he's got. Little breeze around this afternoon, perfect afternoon for football really. Straight away the pressure was on Ryan McMenamin, he was fouled. Free kick out here as far as Sean Cavada. Played superbly in the uh, Ulster final, got that marvellous goal against Antrim in Clonus. Free kick quickly in as far as Mulligan. Trying to get away from his man here, kicking from about 30 metres out, it's going to drop short. Corley out as far as Morgan of Flaherty immediately. Let's see how they build. Flaherty again. Dermot Early, look how far back he's come, the midfielder. That's Gary White getting it away, good ball. Nice precision football, Big Foley's come away, well away from full back. Out here as far as Eamon Callaghan. Callaghan with 11 championship points so far in his career. Back towards Cavada, having a very good season. On as far as Smith, four goals in five games for him. That's a poor attempt, but he was under pressure. Davy Hart kicking it out, not such a good one. Only as far as Daryl Flynn produces a free this time on the 20 meter line and a chance for them to produce the first score. It's a chance for Johnny Doyle. This for his first of the afternoon. Difficult enough one for a player kicking from the right and from that particular position, but he puts it over, no mistake. Dermot Early trying to get a fist to it. Cavan is there as well. And as the game develops, I think it'll be interesting to see that matchup of Sean Cavan and Dermot Early. Both informed players. Brian Flanagan. Again, pressing forward here is Morgan O'Flaherty. Good running across the air by Callaghan. Nice transfer, Johnny Doyle, ever willing to take it forward, have a go, have a crack himself and put it over the bar. Johnny Doyle's second point, this one the first to come from play. Eamon Callaghan was involved, fed it in beautifully for Johnny Doyle. This is an experienced man, he's been here before. Here's Joe McMahon, I haven't seen any of Joe so far in the opening nine minutes. Brian Duher, chance now for the counter-attack. Philip Jordan holding it up here, inside towards Stephen Ernest, a lovely ball, fed beautifully in directly in front of O'Neill, outside here to Duher once again, having a go, looking for Tyrone's first point and producing it in the tenth minute. Corley's kick here, fisted down by Davy Hart, only to the other number five, and that is Morgan O'Flaherty. Towards Ronan Sweeney, never reached him. Reaches Conor Gormley instead, playing in his 50th championship match this afternoon. Duher, all alone, marking his slack. Penrose stepping across here, beating the challenges. Fouled eventually, or maybe fouled more than eventually. Whistle finally went anyway. Inside to Mulligan. Ahead towards Stephen O'Neill on a pitch where he got eight points in the league against Dublin back in February. That's the first of the day. And it ties up the scores at two points apiece. 
great point by Stephen O'Neill. In a twinkle, Tyrone turn it on. Press Stuhar, now O'Neill, and it's Tyrone 2, Kildare 2. Oh, good shoulder on Gary White, he's a strongly built player against Ryan McMenamin. That's what you want to see. McLaughlin. Play opens up here beautifully for James Kavanagh. Good scoring chance. Goal chance. Sweeney! Roman Sweeney! Puts it in the back of the net. Tyrone exposed at the back and Kildare in to punish them. And it's a goal and two to two points. And Roman Sweeney has just kicked his fourth ever championship goal created by James Cavada. Beautifully finished to the back of the net. It was an assured kick. Beautifully in by Roman Sweeney. McConnell's kick here. Cavanaugh's under it, but it breaks away here as far as Tommy McGuigan. Now Ryan McMenamin. Kevin Hughes. Held on to somehow by Sean Cavanaugh. Ready to press forward and take on the man, trying to break the challenge, but the challenge is strong. Cavanaugh's strong as well. Fisting it here as far as Davy Hart trying to get by Johnny Doyle. Having to kick it from outside, it's a great kick. Wonderful kick by Davy Hart. Quality footballer. Hasn't missed a match since his debut against Cavan four years ago. Always chips in with a point or two in a match. That's wonderful. This is caught well here by Brian Flanagan. Tommy McGuigan was fouling him. Free to Kildare. Here's Alan Smith. Morgan O'Flaherty now. Back once again to James Cabana. Oh, dangerous one in towards Callahan once again. And this time, nice and delicately over the bar by Eamon Callahan. Lovely score. Taking on Tyrone at their own game. James Cavanaugh, horrible angle, what a score, what a terrific point by a man who really is a most skilled operator and Kildare lead by a goal and five to four points, this was out and close to the end line, an impossible shot, an impossible angle, great score, well blocked that time by Dermot Early as Philip Jordan was trying to get it away and the foul then committed on Brian Flanagan by Stephen O'Neill. Yeah, and this guy, Brian Flanagan, the Raiders working overtime for him today. He's anticipating all kinds of balls coming in, whether the low or high, acting as a sweeper, but playing so effectively. Again, a wayward kick here, picked up by Connor Gormley, Tyrone's number six. We're mentioning Brian Flanagan there. I think his role might be defi defined as sweeper in front of the two defenders marking Tyrone's out and out strikers. But he's doing it to perfection. He certainly is. Callahan then down as far as Smith. Justin McMahon trying to force him wide out to an angle. Back in again to Smith. This is clever football by Kildare and that's a clever point. And Alan Smith gets his first point of the match. It's no more than he deserved because he's been involved in attack after attack. Darrell Flynn back towards O'Neill. Taking it up here is Mick Foley. Needs to get rid of it. O'Neill was anticipating and in came Ryan McMenamin. Well, he'll chase after anything, McMenamin. And McMahon will take the free for Tyrone. High one in over Mulligan, anticipating was Humor Grillen. That's good anticipation by the former under 21 player. Only uh, out as far as Jordan, however, and back into McGuigan. Here comes Stephen O'Neill, again a very tricky angle for him, but another superb score! Stephen O'Neill over the bar, a six point for Tyrone, a third for O'Neill, best of the day so far for him. Beautiful what, kick. Yeah, what you can see is pure class, what a score from such a difficult angle with what you call his wrong foot, that's beautiful. Approaching half time and there's very little to choose in terms of the scoring chances produced as we watch Kildare extricate themselves somehow out of a difficult position and White has it. Tyrone created 13 scoring chances, one less by Kildare. And as you can see, Kildare with seven scoring chances taken, six taken by the champions. Here's Brian Flanagan. Up towards Callahan, backing back to try and take it and read the flight of the ball. Johnny Doyle after it, nothing he could do about it. 
Well, I know there was question marks about the quality of Leinster football and all of that, but all of those questions have been answered in the first half today. This has been an outstanding display from uh, Kildare. Johnny Doyle would like to finish here with a score. What a kick! Marvellous score, a fourth point for Johnny Doyle. Well, we marvel at the hurlers being able to take the sideline cuts. That was another beauty by Johnny Doyle. Oh, another very poor kick away as far as Brian Duher. Back almost sweeping. Casually playing it in the direction of Martin Penrose. Great ball across to O'Neill. And he kicks it over the bar and it came from a Kildare mistake. So one Kildare mistake punished immediately put over the bar emphatically again early touches it down but it's Tyrone who've anticipated those little knockdowns by Kildare's number nine and they're onto them quickly Mulligan now greater intent greater thrust in their movements and Mulligan kicks and puts it over the bar his first two in a row for Tyrone Corley belting it to the centre this time it's dropped again by Dermot early trying to catch it but he wins it back well Mick Foley up there to support him challenged by Joe McMahon now those dirty balls are being won there by Tyrone getting in the little tackles getting in the challenges and it breaks kindly for them at the other end Penrose to Mulligan trying to beat Gary White to it put under pressure still manages to get the kick in and puts it over the bar two in a row for Owen Mulligan three for Tyrone at the start of the second half here's PJ Quinn well they're flying right now and it's Kildare who just need a score from somewhere, maybe a handy free kick, anything. Stephen O'Neill down towards Penrose, challenged by McLaughlin, he's got the measure of McLaughlin, does well. Martin Penrose hasn't scored today so far, but he's uh, been constantly involved, very difficult opponent to dispossess. Well, there's no doubt about it, they got a dose of rocket fuel or something at half-time because they've come out in the first couple of minutes of the second half and they burnt the pitch there. That's a fabulous response by Tyrone, certainly All-Ireland uh, champions who were looking there for a moment coming into half-time at their, at their time being taken from them. And that was Gareth Buchanova's response to Andrew McLaughlin. Yellow card, kicked over by Stephen O'Neill. No difficulty, his fifth point of this match and the teams are level. It's only taken his team five and a half minutes to draw level. They've made up the deficit of four points. And now, Kieran McGinney's got something to think about here. Held on to here by Sean Kavanagh from that kick out. They're making min speed of Kildare right now at the start of the second half. Mulligan kicks it over the bar. Three for Mulligan, got nothing in the first half. And in the opening eight minutes of the second, he's got three to his name. Chance to make progress early. Trying to steal a march on Ryan McManaman. Pull back, free kick. Thinks about the quick one, referee allows him in as far as Alan Smith. Haven't seen him yet in the second half because the ball simply hasn't gone in there. This time it has, and this time Justin McMahon does really, really well. His brother Joe McMahon helps him out, and the referee says steps taken are too long taken by Ryan McMenamin to get the ball away, and Garoid O'Connor from Galway, the referee, rules against McMenamin and blows for a free in. And he's got a very, very puzzled look on his face. I don't blame him. Johnny Doyle to kick it, an easy enough kick, and he puts it over the bar. And the teams are level, once again, level for the third time. Well, they've fought back very hard, valiantly indeed, Tyrone, to take the lead in this match, and now that lead has been snatched from them again. Back to level taking, Tim Donnelly, on as far as James Cavanagh, fascinating quarter-final. Lobbed in there dangerously to Johnny Doyle, breaks down there, intended for Smith, trying to keep it alive there. Managed to succeed in doing so, Doyle onto it again from Callahan's pass, he hits it in inside the post, and he puts it over the bar, and Kildare are back in front of this match again. Great game. The fans are finding it very, very compelling viewing this afternoon. Great catch by Sean Kavanagh, setting up Brian Dewar. A chance to put this one over the bar. He's done the needful, 
and it's 13 apiece again, level once more. A goal and 10 to 13 points, Dewar with his second. Cavanaugh made it for him, but the ever-willing Brian Dewar from Clonmel Oil gets onto it and strikes it smartly between the sticks. There's Brian Flanagan, fouled it seemed by Joe McMahon, referee allows an advantage, the challenge by Dewar works out, it comes as far as Mulligan, and there's a chance now to slip it down here, as far as Brian McGuigan. Has his bearings, so clips it in as far as Stephen O'Neill, trying to turn, back onto the left again, that's a beauty! Toronto back in front by one, O'Neill's got six, what a quarter-final this is, it's got everything. Rip-roaring tension, great finishing as well, superb play, wonderful individual skills, none better than O'Neill, look at the turn, look at that for a score. Knocked down, onto it again swiftly, there was Kelly, out here it comes as far as Mick Foley, and a lovely kick, a brilliant kick, Mick Foley's first point of this year's championship over the bar. His ninth ever in a fine career, today his 22nd championship match. There was the pass made for him there by Rob Kelly, out as far as Mick Foley, and the teams are level again. 59 minutes are gone in this contest. So now who's going to win it? Connor Gormley, lazily onto it. The other number six, Flanagan's after him. Can he make up the ground? Number Corm, Conor Gormley getting the goal against Starman, the Ulster Championship, back to O'Neill. Oh, taking superb responsibility. A lethal left boot of his. Got eight here against Dublin in the league, but this is the big stuff. This is the championship, and this is where O'Neill is once again excelling. It's won here by Brian Flanagan of Kildare. Back to Dermot Early. Movement ahead of him. Johnny Doyle peeling away from right across to left. Followed there belatedly by Philip Jordan. Slipped in there towards Ken Donnelly. Tries to get it onto his right. Well blocked down, that's a great block. And there Ricey gets it out as far as McConnell, the goalkeeper. And they slip it forward as far as Joe McMahon. A great block that time. Well, you remember a great block that Tyrone had through Philip Jordan many years ago against Armagh, Stevie McDonnell, that day towards the end of the All-Ireland Final, 2002. McMahon, whoever wins this particular quarter-final will be well fired up and well tuned for a semi-final against Cork with a facile win by comparison against Danny Gall. Gary White, in here as far as Morgan O'Flaherty, six minutes are left to play, that's a fine catch. Brilliantly done there by Brian McGuigan. Smith's trying to get it off him. But suddenly it's Tyrone who looked commanding, controlled, composed. McMahon down there towards O'Neill. Good running. Slipping it back towards Justin, or Justin McMahon again. What a kick by the fullback. That could be a winner. Justin McMahon from Omar. Hitting it over for his first ever point in championship football, released by Stephen O'Neill, back to McMahon, who started it and certainly finished it. Picked up by Morgan O'Flaherty, referee again blows his whistle, free kick quickly taken by Johnny Doyle, down as far as Kavanagh, one point in the first half, hasn't scored since, there'll be one minute of added time, not too much time left as Kavanagh kicks and Kavanagh's put it wide, another wide, another missed opportunity. And they are blowing it now at this stage. They've had every opportunity. Yeah, that's uncharacteristic of the, of, of Johnny Kavna. Again, should have scored that one. Again, got inside his marker very well, but should have put that one over the bar. They've scored a number of great opportunities in the last couple of minutes. So what's going to be the result of this chat between referee and the two men? It's yellow cards for Hughes and yellow card for Early. So I make it uh, two yellow cards for Kildare, Gary White and Dermot. Oh, three, and McLaughlin as well, of course and uh, two for Tyrone, Conor Gormley and now Kevin Hughes. Well, Tyrone have created 31 scoring chances to 24 for Kildare so far. We've only got 30 seconds left. Morgan O'Flaherty has the free. It's everything now for Kildare. They've got to try and go and get a goal, or else bye-bye to Championship 2009. And the referee's going to bring the ball forward 13 metres. Yeah, the one who just put it in there, took the chance, put it into the edge of the square. 
all or nothing at this stage. There'll be no time left afterwards. There it is, in it goes. Held up to securely. Out came Jordan, out comes Davy Hart. Tyrone live on, the referee blows his whistle. It's all over. And Tyrone have beaten Kildare in a wonderful All-Ireland quarter-final. Kieran McGinney's team did well. He can be proud, missed a lot of opportunities, but they played some great football. More importantly, they put it up to Mickey Hart's team. And we had a genuine contest here at Croke Park this afternoon. Only two points between them at the finish. The crowd have enjoyed it. It's Tyrone who go on, Johnny Doyle's team go out, and it's going to be Tyrone against Cork. That should be some semi-final. Here this afternoon, it is victory for Tyrone, the All-Ireland champions. Tyrone, 16 points. Kildare, one goal and 11. It certainly is the toughest we've had this year for sure and probably it's the toughest championship match in a long while. Um, Kildare came out to do a job and they did it very well. Um, we still figured at half time we weren't dead and buried. We knew we had more left in, in the tank so to speak. Um, but you have to take your hat off to Brian Doher here. I mean the man is just a machine and uh, he's the catalyst that makes everything else happen. But that start of the second half was essential for us. Uh, we were a bit disappointed when we missed two or three chances when we had that role which could come back to bite you. But these these boys are made of great stuff, their experience told there to the last and then the introduction of Brian McGuigan certainly steadied the ship as well. Yeah, it was not been tough for a long time but thankfully a couple of points at the end up to take us away from it. You never seemed to panic though throughout the game? No, well we weren't great in the first half now, um, they were full value for the lead at half time and probably should have been ahead a bit more. But in the second half we got back to a bit more basics and started working a bit harder and thankfully it paid off for us and we got the scores and it mattered. We're disappointed. We got it. In fact, we felt like you know, even though we played below par today, we probably played well enough to win it. But we didn't, and that's all that'll be remembered. I'm sure when you were four points up at half time, you knew that it, the job wasn't even close to being done. Then did you? I know, like you know, we sort of knew like the throne would always come back. But it's hard. Like we give the ball away very silly around the middle uh, in, in that first 15 minutes. Like we, we weren't having a problem sort of winning possession. We were having a problem keeping it, and uh, that was basically what cost us in the end. Kevin Maxday, was it the game of the championship so far? I, I think it was, yeah. I, for me, uh, yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to say, it just had everything. Des, you know, it captured your attention for the full 70 minutes plus. They gave everything. Both sides gave everything. Made a real contest of it. Physicality, great scores, great misses if there's such a thing. Loads of excitement. Uh, they just kept at it full on uh, and never, never, never stopped off it. It was a great, great contest. I think we expected it, and both teams, you know, it's just terrible to have a loser, but there you yeah. go. A great game of football. Yeah, Tony, you, yourself and Anthony, I think, mm. a, f a couple of weeks ago said here that if Tyrone are going to be caught, the quarter final is yeah. the time to get yeah, them. Yeah, I thought they might have been vulnerable, but like all great teams, they have top players, they do the right thing at the right time under pressure, and critically, I suppose, they've been in situations before where they're under pressure and they knew what to do as opposed to Kildare. If Kildare were playing any other team today, I thought they would have won the game, yeah. but critically for them, when the pressure came on, they gave away a lot of turnovers, and when it came to shooting under pressure, they just took the wrong shots under pressure which Tyrone have the top players and Kildare will get there eventually. They've made huge progress this year. All right, Kevin, they started brilliantly, Kildare. Yeah, they, they got themselves into a great place. Uh, McGinney and, and, and his team deserve great credit. They got the matchups really well. Mick Foley took on uh, McMahon and wiped them. Then they got the goal that gave them massive women. This is, this is textbook. This is absolutely magnificent. You've got to clear the middle, leave it to the man coming in at pace and then dish when you get the the free man. And like Sweeney does a lovely little shimmy. He's under pressure to finish that, Des. That's not simple. But Cavanagh does fair swell. Look at Sweeney peeling off his man, doing everything correct. Lovely little dummy here on the floor mm. into the net. And that gives Kildare great momentum. They're now in a good place in terms of taking on Tyrone. They're playing from in front, they're leading. And all their play has the look of a team that's well up for the All-Ireland champions, well up for them. Cavanagh swings over a beauty. And everything they're doing is good. It's controlled and management have to be really pleased. Then you throw in Doyle from a sideline ball. Now you're in a really yeah. strong position. Plus four at half time and they're looking really good. Mm. Maybe half time came at the wrong time, Tony, because to start of the second half, Tyrone were they, on fire. They blitzed them. They, were, they just showed the experience they have. You know what? Half time, it was six points to one seven, and you thought, well, they did everything right in the first half. All they have to do is tag on the points, keep attacking. But Kildare, or, uh, Tyrone answered them. They really played well. Mulligan and O'Neill, in particular, really blitzed them in the, in, in the full forward line. And here we can see from the graphic where they scored the five points that the full forward, Owen Mulligan and Stephen O'Neill scored. 
Typical, typical Tyrone, worked the ball, very controlled into the full forward line. O'Neill was out in front. Here we see Doher, Mickey Hart spoke about him a while ago. He's always in the right place at the right time. Pin rows, pinpoint pass, poor enough marking, but 14 yards out over the bar. But all the work had to go in to get him into that position. Here they go again, wins the break at midfield. Sean Cavanagh lays it out. That's Philly Jordan, Davy Hart, puts the ball in again. And who's out there again? On, on Mulligan, who is looking flying fit, actually. In fact, uh, I thought he looked as fresh today as I've seen him for years. Mm. Kicked the ball over the bar on a very hard thing to do. Here we go again. Some of these are turnovers, and, and I think that's, that's what Kieran McGinney was talking about. Joe McMahon wins the ball, but turnovers. They shouldn't have done that. The ball, they should have silky fingers and laid the ball off. Here we see Pinrose again. Looks up, looks for his go-to players. On Neil, or Owen Mulligan has the strength to push off the man. That's a super point. Super point. And here we go again, the ball up the field. Uh, Kildare have the ball in possession, but critically again, they lose possession. Like, they shouldn't have lost that. He should have turned and laid it back out. From the kick out, the ball is worked straight up, up the field. PJ Quinn has the ball, works it out to the wing, and straight away that ball is worked in by O'Neill into the corner. There you are, Pinrose again. Beats his man. Pull down, simple tap over free. Like, that's six frees in a row from scoreable positions all within the first six and a half minutes to put them a point up. And look when you're under pressure, who are you looking for? You're looking for Sean Cavanagh, you're looking for the likes of Brian Doher, and here you have a resurgent Owen Mulligan over the bar. Yeah. Now, any team looking at that this evening will look, at the, look at, at, the, at the Tyrone team and say, it's a freshness that we haven't seen for Tyrone for a while. They look good. That gave Tyrone a slight edge, Kevin, but... Kildare still had lots of possession and chances near the end. Absolutely. You know, you have to say they never stopped. Now, I mean, that, that blitz would have put a lot of teams back on their feet, but they kept playing. Now, we're calling this poor execution. For a while, we considered talking about, well, it could be an experience yeah. or it's a poor yeah. decision making. But it's not because there's a lot of experienced players involved here. The decision to shoot is the correct one. It just is poor execution. But are they forced to shoot from uh, Of course, from the blanket, the blanket's out. pushing them yeah. out. And, and the, the time pressure, they're trailing in the game. It's very important moments in the game. And these are all pressure, pressure moments. And Kildare kept repeating the key plays. They weren't getting the scores and yeah. they weren't keeping the pressure on them. And of course, Tyrone are going to wait. They're going to absorb that and then they're going to take now, their own chances. This is the contrast. This is what we're looking for, right? Kildare must get to this place where they can get the ball into the likes of Johnny Doyle and these lads in the full forward line in scoreable positions. Here we see Gormley going in. He has no way in. So what does he do? Turn back and straight away O'Neill is there for him. They go to the go-to players, to the players they know can score. But lads, if you're a good footballer, you're a good footballer. We're giving out about back shooting. Mm -hmm. Justin McMahon comes up the field 45 yards out. That really kills on him. On his right foot. And... Good night, Irene. Over the bar, beautiful score. Very hard to beat Tyrone because they have the players that can react. Would Justin do that nine times out of ten? <laughs> well, he did it today. That's <laughs> all that counts. That it counts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a great score. All right then, Kevin. Who are the nominees for Man of the Match? Well, when you look at it, you have to you have to feel that Owen Mulligan had a major part to play. Uh, Tony spoke about him, and he, and he was tremendous. There's no question about that. I also felt uh, for Tyrone, we had a, a really good look at. Uh, or for, on the Kildare side, for Johnny Doyle. I, I really liked the, the way he played. And Stephen O'Neill was, you know, back to something like we know yeah. he can play and uh, marvellous performance from him too. All right, Tony. Well, we picked Stephen O'Neill as man of the match. I thought he was man of the match. I thought he was superb in everything he did. He looked hungry. He was showing for the ball. He scored seven points, two from freeze. And he just looked sparkling today. He looked fresh as a mm. daisy. Uh, he looked like the Stephen O'Neill we knew uh, a couple of years ago before he, he retired. He looked like the Stephen O'Neill who played Dublin under lights there at the start of the year. Back Back from injury, and any full back will really have his hands full marking him the way he is today. Mm. Fantastic. Okay, good stuff from him. Let's hear from the man of the match then, Stephen O'Neill. Ian Corbett of Toyota Ireland is going to present our GA Football Championship man of the match. Stephen O'Neill with his award. Congratulations, Stephen. Thank you. Well done, Stephen. Is that the kind of game that Tron needed to, to really test their mettle this year? I think it was. Um, it's great preparation for the semi-final, but we knew it was going to be tough anyway. Um, thankfully, we started a bit better in the second half than we did in the first half, and we held on then for the one. You're not the first person from Tyrone who's mentioned that. Were you very disappointed with how you started the game? We were, were I. Well, when you come in at half-time, four points down, you're, you, know, you just know your back's against the wall, and, and you're going to have to play better in the next, next half, or you're, you're out in your ear. And, uh, we knew every minute was going to count in the second half, and thankfully, we, we held on to get the one. 
Kevin, you like the way Tyrone management stayed very loyal to Stephen after a quiet couple of games. Yeah, and others, you know, you could throw Owen Mulligan in that he had his bad moments too. But this is this is the greatness of Hart and his management team. You recall last year that you know O'Neill was fed up with football, not in a, his head was just not on, not on the game, and walked away from it. But he was thinking, okay, I might be able to use him in last year's All Ireland final. But what about if we win that and we're, we're, we're going forward with a real team? I need O'Neill there. He knows how good he is from underage. And he coaxed him and cajoled him back into it. And then we see stuff like this uh, yeah. today, he's which a, is outstanding. Mickey Hart's an orthodox style is interesting, actually. Even the way he brought back Keith Peter Canavan. He was injured, brought him on for a bit, took him off, brought him back on again. Uh, every time he comes up with strategies and they've all worked. A, yeah, it always seems to be the right they've one. They've always worked. Yeah, and I'm interested, you made the point about Mulligan looking fresh. I mean, for a lot of these fellas, it's seven, eight years now at playing at this level. It is, yeah, but it's mental, yeah. it's mental freshness. There's it's still a hunger. It's, it's hard to do it, but if you look at the side and you look at young fellas down yeah. there that want your place, it, it's easier to do it, Des, because you yeah. want to play. An inter-county footballer is a selfish being and all he wants to do is look after himself and make sure he's playing well. And these guys,